Hi guys, Dane here, and today I am going to be doing my uh, top 10 Q Q Q3 favourites. That's what I'm going for there. So these are my favourite books from July, August, and September of 2023. Um, Counting down from 10 to 1, as always, you know the drill. I put all of my quarterly favourites together at the end of the year and do my year favourites. Uh, we'll start with number 10. Dane Reads. So number 10 is The Judgment and In the Penal Colony by Franz Kafka. This was just a little short penguin uh, mini classic thing, just with those two stories in it. Uh, it was in the penal colony, really, that I particularly enjoyed. I mean, trigger warnings for, like, descriptions of torture and all of that stuff. But it was interesting because it was, like, a, a fully-fledged story in its own right. But again, also, it had just this really interesting stuff about the inner workings of this penal colony. It wasn't a very nice place. Um, Kafka, a fantastic writer, of course. So, yes, definitely recommended. At number 9 we have Strangers on a Train by Patricia Highsmith and I should point out if I've done reviews of these I'll link to those in uh, the little bit below because I did do a review of Strangers on a Train, I watched the movie afterwards as well. Uh, yeah, it was pretty good, I enjoyed it more than the talented Mr Ripley, um, the idea being these two strangers meet on a train, they end up having this like plot well one of them is like a nutcase basically and they end up with this plot where they're both gonna kill people for the other one so that it's the perfect crime except only one of them is really on board with this idea it's kind of hard to describe it's like a early thriller i would say like if you like gone girl and things like that you're gonna like strangers on a train at number eight we have Sonny's Blues by James Baldwin. This was another one of these penguin little mini classics that I picked up. It actually had Sonny's Blues and various, like three, I think three other stories. Um, but it turns out James Baldwin is a cracking short story writer. I haven't read a huge amount of his stuff but I really want to, especially after reading these. I mean, I'm a fan of drug books and Sonny's Blues has got it all. It's got racism, it's got heroin, it's got marginalization, um, you know, it's got downtrodden characters. It's just, it's just perfect. It's a very good short story beautifully written uh, and music music and musicians as well all right then we have the trial of oscar wilde by richard elman so this is actually just an excerpt of a longer book again this was one of those penguin little classics and um yeah this just goes more into the the trial of oscar wilde really um goes specifically into the events surrounding when he went to trial his uh he basically he got done for uh, public, uh, indecency because he was gay um, and it pretty much is the reason why he ended up dying he sort of died destitute in Paris really but um, yeah really interesting read I read it all in one go on the exercise bikes at the gym it's obviously very sad um, but it was good to you know to learn more about um, the trial of, of Oscar Wilde and, and how all that came about then we have Haven't They Grown by Sophie Hanna. So this is, speaking of thrillers from Patricia Highsmith, this is a contemporary thriller. Sophie Hanna is um, the author who can, does the um, Hercule Poirot continuations with The Blessing of the Agatha Christie Estate. Uh, she does some standalones, which this is. She also has her own uh, like crime series. Um, and to be honest, I found it to be hit and miss, but this particular one was very gripping. Uh, the idea, the main concept, is somebody kind of goes back to spy on uh, a friend who kind of left their lives very mysteriously. And they see their kids there, but their kids haven't aged one bit. Um, and she sort of sets out to figure out why that is, and the mystery and the thriller evolves from there. So yeah, it was really well done. It was one of those thrillers where it actually kept me reading, you know, kept me gagging to read the next bit of it to find out what was going on. Then we have At the Car Wash by Arthur Russell. This is a poetry collection I was sent by Rattle Magazine, I think. Um, part of my subscription, so I wasn't, you know, I paid for it. I, it's, it's not a free book for review or anything like that. Um, but actually, it was really good. It's easily the best thing I've had from those guys. It's just a poetry collection by this guy, Arthur Russell, that's all about the uh, car wash that his father used to have, he used to em employ, um, like, black people as cheap labor, basically. Um, and the, his poems kind of all, all of his recollections of that but it's just my kind of poetry it's very um i don't want to say innovative but it's very contemporary um non-rhyming poetry with a soul you know okay then at number four we have the bedding of boys by edward lawn this is another thriller it's uh it's kind of got supernatural elements to it and it is about uh a woman who likes to have sex with underage boys basically edward lawn here on uh, booktube my, my partner is a big fan of his so we're slowly but surely reading as many of his books that we can get our hands on for me it's probably been the best one of them certainly it's been the one that reads the most like 
Uh, it was written by a big name author and was published with a major publishing house behind it. Um, lots of gore, trigger warnings for everything, but uh, yeah, good stuff. Okay, then we have The House on the Strand by Daphne du Maurier, and this is kind of like gothic, almost science fiction, time travel, drug-induced hallucinogen stuff. Um, basically, this guy has this serum that may or may not allow him to travel through time, and so we've kind of got these two timelines going, um, and it's just really well written. It's kind of got historical fiction vibes to it, but in a way that made it really gripping. Um, I am actually reading another Daphne du Maurier at the moment, which is historical fiction, which I'm not particularly enjoying, so I do think she can be hit and miss in that particular genre. Um, but yeah, The House on the Strand, probably for me, my favorite Daphne du Maurier. Um, and I, I, you know, I've read read Rebecca and all of the, all of the others. Um, and The House on the Strand, yeah, it's probably my favorite so far, so tough one to beat. All right, and number two, we have Concrete Rose by Angie Thomas. So this is the prequel to The Hate You Give. Um, I think, personally, I enjoyed it even more, partly because of all the character building that had been done in The Hate You Give. So I was already, you know, familiar with a lot of the characters there. A lot of the history uh, had been talked about in The Hate You Give. Um, but also, I think Angie Thomas has come along as a writer as well. So with the result, it's kind of a... Yeah, um, I guess almost another coming-of-age novel focusing on uh, Maverick, who is Star's father. Very well written, very enjoyable. If you like The Hate You Give, I would recommend checking out Concrete Rose. And so that leaves me with book number one, which is A Concise Chinese to English Dictionary for Lovers by Zhao Luo Guo. So I already knew I was going to enjoy this book because I'd read uh, kind of an excerpt of it as part of the Penguin... Uh, no, not the Penguin, the Vintage Mini Moderns box set. And I uh, really enjoyed that when I came across it there. So I've been keeping my eyes peeled, finally saw a copy, picked it up, and it didn't disappoint. It's kind of a coming-of-age story as well, except the main character in it is 23 by the time we get to know her. But she's kind of lived her life in rural China and isn't really familiar with Western customs. So when she comes to the UK to better learn English uh, as a language, she falls in love with an older man who also happens to be bisexual. Um, goes traveling throughout Europe and really kind of finds herself as well I love the fact that her English gets better throughout the novel because it's kind of written in the you know uh, the style of, with which she speaks and uh, Overall, I can't fault it. I gave it a five out of five cracking novel um, It's gonna take some beating put it that way when it comes to my overall favorite of the year so there we have it. Those are my 10 favourite books of, uh, let's see, what was it, July to September 2023. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.